can say, say, was that what you were expecting in your grammar? Welcome to the <laughs> 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 so, so we're coming to, uh, towards the end of our first part, but before we do that, we've got a special guest uh, who's going to present some actual scientific knowledge to you tonight. Uh, she's come originally from Scotland, flew all the way over to the Czech Republic, not Czechoslovakia as I was told earlier, <laughs> I'm about 20 years behind the time, sorry. Um, uh, her project is on tropical ants in the tropics, <laughs> and she's going to explain all the beautiful details about this. Please give her a wonderful hand. Uh, so, I work in the, the, one of the last great unexplored areas in our, the tropical rainforest canopy. And it might interest you to know that even though we've sped, we've sent humans into space, we still know relatively little about most of the animals that live here on Earth, especially in rainforests. And in the complex architecture of rainforests, there are millions and millions of species that we know nothing about. Uh, and if you climb into a rainforest tree, you might expect to first see a monkey, or a colourful bird, or a venomous snake. But actually, you're far more likely to be met by a swarm of ants, a bloodthirsty mosquito, or a stick insect the length of your arm. And this is because almost every individual in a tree is an insect. So if you took this room and you filled it with all the animals in the rainforest tree, then probably uh, one beer can would contain all of the things with the pack. This is my, uh, I, I work with insects, the far more important than birds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what we're interested in learning is how all these animals can survive in this extreme environment. The extreme temperatures, the heavy rains, the high winds of the tropical tree forests uh, are difficult to cope with. And the only way to find out is to get up there. But how? So we have a lot of different ways of doing this. Sometimes we use giant catapults and we shoot ropes high up into the canopy over a large limb of the tree and then climb up. Um, we've also tried hot air balloons. So we take the hot air balloon from a clearing in the forest and we have instead of a basket, a chair, and we try to collect samples from, the, from above the trees of the forest. Which is really dangerous as you can imagine because uh, even the slightest gust of wind can blow you off course uh, and into a tree. Um, uh, to the tree that you want to sample. Um, another more permanent way uh, to sample the rainforest is to build a canopy, a canopy crane, just like a crane that you would find in a building site, except in the middle of a remote forest. Um, but even with these techniques, uh, it would be it would take several lifetimes to find out about all these animals that live on them. And for tiny, more secretive ones, it's, it's impossible. So sometimes the old-fashioned ways are best. Uh, and the old-fashioned way, as pioneered by Darwin, is to cut the tree down and collect everything in it and find out what it's doing there. So for this, you need a lot of different insect specialists. Uh, and I focus on the ants, because uh, almost up to 90% of the individual bugs in the tree are ants. And the reason they're so successful is because they're social insects. They can live in massive colonies with thousands of their sisters. Um, and they're, they can often be very aggressive and territorial and they'll defend their patches with chemical warfare and their stings. Um, and these dominant ants could also be very addicted to sugar. They'll spend a lot of their time looking for plant-sucking bugs and drinking the honeydew. This is the waste product of plant bugs, uh, plant-sucking bugs. And uh, some bugs are so used to having ants tending them that they can't even uh, do their business without an ant massaging them first. <laughs> of course, uh, not all ants are like this. <laughs> some ants are, are more peaceful, uh, not aggressive, and not addicted to sugar. <laughs> uh, for example, the trapdoor ant, which has uh, long jaws like this, so that they chop up to catch, capture small insects. They um, as well as being these specialist power predators, they really hate conflict and they'll spring back using their, their jaws to avoid any kind of fights. <laughs> Here in Europe, there's not so many ants that live in trees, 
but in the rainforest there are many species that never even see the ground. Um, and it was recently discovered that some ants at the top of the canopy, when they're knocked off, they can paraglide back onto the trunk so that they don't have to make this long journey back up into their home. Um, but where, where do ants call them in the tree forest, in the tree tops? Um, well, they have a no number of ways of building nests. That weaver ants, for example, they use their wings to build a nest. They squeeze a sticky, silk, silky glue by just taking a larva like this and just tapping it, and then they glue leaves together to build their nest. Others just live in these dense mats of epiphyte roots and ferns and trap leaflets that are really common in the canopy. And others prefer living inside hollow twigs and have special block-shaped heads that they use as corks to stop rainwater flooding in through the branches. And this also works to stop intruders because ants also have a lot of enemies in the tree such as uh, spiders that disguise themselves as ants that sneak up and eat them. And ant capitating flies that lay their, their eggs on the head of the ant, which then develops and pops the head off of the ant. <laughs> uh, there are also parasitic fungi that can take over, the, take control of the ant's brain and change its behavior. So all this is to say that uh, the lives of ants in the canopy are really fascinating, and we know they're totally hidden, so we know very little about them. And it's really exciting to discover more. Uh, about their lives, that, and things that have never been seen before. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be longer than the ones that we've done now. Uh, the guy's really keen to go, so <laughs> let's just get on with it. I got the money! I got the money! Yes! Oh, I'm so happy! Oh. Yes, I am. I finally got it. Hey, uh, yes. the research. What's going on in the ecosystem in Dane's hair? Oh my god! <laughs> you don't have to <laughs> No, no, big questions for us, we were just how do we go? We have our objectives, right? In the proposal. I think we start with aim one, which is building the crane. The crane? You <laughs> didn't say the balloon? Well, the balloon is a good idea. <laughs> like, I figure we buy like kind of 20 tons of helium. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I actually started preparing with what was left over from the previous grant, so I'm ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so. going at home, so look, check this out. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> check out my balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, all right, so. Stitched it all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, the, so we, we have to attach this to the chair now. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, are you gonna go? Or am I gonna like, go? I wanna, I wanna, you know. Are you go? No, you go. go. You go. It's gonna be fine. Okay. So uh, we're cruising at an altitude of about <laughs> how far does the hot air balloons go? About two thousand kilometers in the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not the most experienced hot air balloonist you could employ, but I can guarantee to land you on the target of Dame's hair. Right there. Do you see? Just look over the side. Just look over the side. Do you see that little ginger spot? <laughs> That's what we're aiming for, yeah? Okay, but how are we going to get down there? Well, this is where you have your parachutes. <laughs> we cut to the top of Dame's head.
<laughs> you know, we're believed, but we go to heaven. <laughs> you know what? I was eating it one late one night. I I maybe left some crumbs out there. And all of a sudden, something just moved in here. <laughs> it's like. I think there's a ton of species up there, but it's like 99.99% ants. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> like a perfectly normal ecosystem. That's why I think the worst. Wait, come, come. 
Come discuss with me, Hans Brethren. The Queen sent us down here to wage war, but there's nothing here to fight over. Only Brethren. We can feud for you. Have to rescue us? Let's take them to the head. Yes, to the head. Where we will eat them alive. <laughs> By squishing and tapping them. I think another one's may have been invaded. <laughs> 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 Massive deforestation. I saw it on the news. Yeah. <laughs> Scientists are not talking about it, man. I don't know if we can meet anymore, man. This is getting, this is weirder than we have. Oh, this is, you know, it's, it's kind of like a reality show combined with someone's thesis project. I don't know if it's, like, <laughs> it's like, you know, these ants, they, they became a presence in my life. I, I just don't know whether. In your life? Yes. You, you know, know, since that many. <laughs> <laughs> you've done good work, you in town, and you've staged a successful war against the Netherlands, and you've bought us food to feed us for ages. Yes. And do you know what the reward is? What? Um, sugar. For you, for you, young intern, whilst you're working, you get a massage. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be worried, man. I'd be worried. Oh, you get a massage as well? Oh, no. <laughs> I think they're confusing us. <laughs> You can get free massages. Hey guys, I have an idea. What do you think about meeting Alex? Yeah. Do you mean the friend of it? The friend? People say Alex has more sugar than the eye can see. He has more beard. He has beard. He has the Netherlands. He has the Netherlands. It's not deforestated. We don't know. We don't know. It's going to be a discovery. Listen, I'm not. I'm not proud of this. I made a deal. I made a deal with the ant queen. Yeah. What? The actual ant queen? Yes. From your head, or how about she move? She moves back to her. We've gotten to know each other. Uh, we've had some good conversations about what their needs and requirements are. And I don't like where this is going. <laughs> there, <there's laughs> a long term migratory pattern. Where exactly is that migratory pattern? In your direction? <laughs> you. A sacrifice. I had to. I, I, had to yeah. I couldn't have them following me around. Traitor! The scientists and the ants were just too much. I slept with you! You could have given me. I'm sorry. Age gave me Alex, Alex. I got a solution. Alright? See this hair dryer? Global warming. <laughs> 